Before we go any further, I am serious. This video really is just 50 useless pieces of movie trivia. There's no hidden message or deeper analysis here. Or is there? Well, only one way to find out. This orc in The Lord of the Rings The Return of the King was modelled off Harvey Weinstein. The bartender in The Gentleman pulls a pint of Gritchy Pale Ale, a reference to director Guy Ritchie. The coordinates for the enemy airbase in Top Gun Maverick are those of Point Nemo, the point in the ocean furthest from any landmass. These two people in Goodfellas are actually the parents of director Martin Scorsese. This headline in the newspaper Brendan Gleeson's character reads in Paddington 2 is a reference to the opening line of Elvis's song Jailhouse Rock. Born through a party in the county jail. The Millennium Falcon can be seen parked at the diner in Spaceballs. Chad Stahelski, the director of the John Wick movies, was Keanu Reeves' stunt double in the Matrix films. In Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, the characters in this painting are caught getting frisky. In this scene from The Two Towers, Gimli is being played by his scale double, Brent Beattie. In Austin Powers' Gold Member, Mini-Me is wearing a Toronto Maple Leafs jersey because it's Mike Myers' favourite hockey team. This woman in Full Metal Jacket is the daughter of director Stanley Kubrick. One of his other daughters appears in Eyes Wide Shut, while this kid is Kubrick's grandson. In the gun barrel sequence of the first three James Bond movies, James Bond is actually being played by stuntman Bob Simmons, not by Sean Connery. The ending of the Lilo and Stitch movie was reanimated after 9-11 which happened only a few months before it was due to be released. M's slide on her motorcycle in Nope is a reference to an anime tradition called the Akira Slide. In Terminator 2, actor Robert Patrick was specifically trained to fire a gun without blinking. The school in Spider-Man Homecoming was founded in 1962, the same year the Spider-Man comics were released. This scene from The Two Towers took five takes to get right. The bartender in Tron Legacy is Steven Lisberger, the director of the original Tron film. In American Psycho, Paul Allen's business card uses the same font as the opening titles. Simon Pegg and Edgar Wright appear as these zombies in The Land of the Dead because the director was such a fan of Shaun of the Dead. Jo switching her writing hands in the 2019 Little Woman adaptation is a nod to the novel's author being ambidextrous. While the news is on in Hellboy 2, the ticker tape talks about Blade 2, which was also directed by Guillermo del Toro. Sam Raimi included a poster of Wes Craven's movie The Hills Have Eyes in The Evil Dead. Wes Craven then included The Evil Dead on the TV in A Nightmare on Elm Street. The mask being worn by the Joker in The Dark Knight is modelled off one seen in an episode of the original Batman TV series. In The Hateful Eight, Kurt Russell is seen smashing an authentic 150-year-old guitar worth $40,000. Music time's over! He was supposed to smash a replica prop. This is why Jennifer Jason Lee is so surprised. The dead girls in Us are positioned the same way as the murdered twins in The Shining. In The Matrix, this is an actual BDSM club in Sydney and the extras are wearing their own clothes. In Interstellar, this 500 acre cornfield was grown specifically for the movie, then sold for a profit by Christopher Nolan. None of the people Rocky is running past are extras. They're just locals who happened to be in shot. The person throwing him an orange wasn't scripted at all. The worst toilet in Scotland, as we see in train spotting, actually smelled quite good because the shit was made of chocolate. This window in Avatar is shaped like the American flag, and the square even reads 50 where the stars should go. In Troy, neither Eric Bana nor Brad Pitt used a stunt double for their duel, but they agreed to pay each other for every accidental hit. In this scene of the two towers, Aragorn is wearing the gauntlets of Boromir, who died in the first film. The famous sketch of Rose in Titanic was actually drawn by James Cameron himself. He's left-handed, so the shots were flipped to match Leonardo DiCaprio in the wide shots. When Hades says, Relax, it's only half time. In Hercules, it's the exact halfway point of the movie's runtime. In Event Horizon, Sam Neill asks that the Union Jack in the Australian flag be replaced with the Aboriginal flag, which is how he hopes it will look by 2047 when the movie is set. The cats on Deadpool's t-shirt in Deadpool 2 belong to Taylor Swift, and they had to get permission from her to use their images. This man is the real-life Chris Gardner that Will Smith plays in The Pursuit of Happiness. This is the real Aaron Brockovich. I'm sure there's another piece of movie trivia for this shot in the two towers, but I can't for the life of me remember what it is. In Liar Liar, Jim Carrey cameos in his own movie, appearing in the background as his Fire Marshal Bill character from the show In Living Colour. Scrooge falling over in this scene is not intentional. Bill Murray slipped on the water he threw on the waiter earlier in the scene. 
This blood splatter in Children of Men wasn't supposed to happen, but the director yelling cut was drowned out by all the noise, so they carried on filming. The blood had to be digitally erased from the shot in a way that makes it look like it is slowly evaporating. This scene in La La Land was filmed with a single camera in a single take. This girl on the bus in Forrest Gump is Tom Hanks' daughter. To hide the twist in The Empire Strikes Back, the scripted line said on set was, You don't know the truth. Obi-Wan killed your father. Mark Hamill was the only cast member who knew the real line during filming. So at the screening, when that happened, Harrison turned to me and said, Hey kid, you didn't fucking tell me that. <laughs> Lawrence Fishburne lied about his age in order to star in Apocalypse Now. He was only 14 when production began. This entire sequence in Elf was shot in New York City on the last day of filming and everyone Will Ferrell interacts with are just random strangers. Ah, number 50, it's so annoying that I've forgotten the other piece of movie trivia about this shot. It's so frustrating it makes me want to scream in pain. Yeah!